Murchison Falls National Park is the biggest and oldest national park in Uganda. Likely this is not new to you. Have you been to Murchison Falls and do you really know this national park? We went on the quest to discover a bit of this park for you so you can go there or indeed go there again. In part one, we take you through the journey to Murchison Falls National Park. Our approximately 260 kilometer road trip to Murchison Falls National Park, located in Masindi District. As far as the travel experience goes, it's a very comfortable ride, as most of the road network is perfectly tarmacked, making for a smooth sailing ride. But even ahead of the anticipation of the park, fun could start on your way there. Make sure you don't miss the quick stopover at the Kafu River Bridge. On the way to Murchison Falls National Park, Kafu in Masindi District is a good place to stop. It's a hub of activity and you could consider trying out the different delicacies, the meat, the gonja, the cassava. And if that's not what you're into, then you could just even stretch your legs. From Kafu River Bridge, there's only 50 kilometers and you enter the Murchison Falls National Park. The stop at the gate will only take you a few minutes, 15 to be precise, where after paying your 30,000 shillings domestic park entry fee, you'll be ushered into the gate of the National Park with the caution to drive at 40 kilometers per hour, obviously to avoid any unfortunate incidents with the animals. The 80 kilometer drive through the park is one that will leave you in awe. It's a mini game drive where if you're lucky enough, you'll get to see some of the wildlife. But all the same, at least sighting a monkey or chimpanzee is guaranteed. Plus you start to get the feeling that you're getting into the wild. But if you're that tourist, with a premeditated plan like we did, then it will only be a matter of minutes before you're greeted by the dock that is home to the ferry that will transport you to the opposite side of the park if your accommodation is indeed on the other side. The park has different accommodation and activities for different tourists depending on tastes and preferences really. If you decide to stay on the northern end of the park, then you'll have the fortune of crossing over with your vehicle on the ferry which just adds on to the thrill of the entire experience. The ferry comes at the top of the hour, starting at 4 p.m., with another one at 5 p.m., and the very last one at 6 p.m. If you're an early bird, you have the option of taking a quick boat ride around the River Nile as you wait for the ferry to show up. While on the ferry, passengers are expected to stand outside their cars which is all the better, as it allows you to catch a wonderful and beautiful glimpse of the sunset. From there, we drove off to our accommodation of the night, Para Safari Lodge, also known as the Jewel of the Nile, a stone throw away from the point where the ferry docks. By 7.45, we had checked into Para Safari Lodge and dinner time had arrived. The ambient reception after the several hours on the road was absolutely welcome. Um, the weekend rate of Friday, Saturday and Sunday, very poker friendly rate. We target that so that at least, you know, everybody who did not get time during the, the, the week when they're working, they can enjoy that. We are only running two, at 220 US dollars a double, full board, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 
Para Lodge has a Queen's Cottage for those who want to experience a piece of history while at it. The Queen's Cottage has a historical attachment to it because it was constructed when the, 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 Queen, the sitting Queen Elizabeth was coming and that is the place we constructed it just for in respect of herself. So that is also an attachment of history in it. Join us tomorrow as we go on the game drive in Marchison, looking for predators and grazers and the Nile crocodiles, plus much, much more.